Welcome back to our live feed. Um, sorry, we experienced a technical hitch while I was just going to conclude my remarks to uh, the Faculty of Media and Communication. Um, the last point that I had made was to urge you uh, to seek information that you require to be able to um, you know, operate comfortably um, around the university. My colleagues mentioned uh, various sets of rules and regulations that you will require and that you need to be quite conversant with uh, to be able to have um, a good time at the university. Uh, lastly, um, also I mentioned that if you need information, um, whatever kind of information, please always visit our offices. We have heads of departments who have spoken to you uh, later, once you have settled in, you will also elect class representatives who will play the important role of speaking on your behalf or seeking the indulgence of the university administration whenever there are issues that you need addressed. And then also um, that we have administrative staff uh, who serve in various roles at the Faculty of Media and Communication and who are in their offices on a daily basis. Please visit them and be able to have your problems or whatever information that you require um, uh, from them. Finally, I would like this opportunity to take this opportunity to welcome the Dean of the Faculty of Media and Communication, Dr. Isaac uh, Mutwiri, uh, to speak to you. Thank you so much and welcome to uh, Multimedia University. Uh, good morning. On behalf of uh, the Faculty of Media and Communication, uh, popularly known as FAMECO, I would like to welcome you to the university. We as a faculty feel honored and really appreciate you for choosing to stand at MMU and FAMECO in particular. I would also want to extend my welcome to the parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts and uncles who are following our live stream, live stream today. I acknowledge your hard work and the sacrifices that you made. Without you, we would not be here today welcoming these fine ladies and gentlemen. Uh, without you, we would not be welcoming the newest Formations. Thank you for your confidence and trust in us. We promise we'll do our best to carry this mighty duty you have entrusted us with. I would like each of the new students to take a moment of reflection to acknowledge the privileges and the blessings that you have. As you come to and share your blessings, reflect for a moment on who you are and how far you've traveled to get here. Whether you hail from the remotest, very in the most marginalized area of this republic, or from the most affluent estates, attending the most basic public uh, day school, or ex exclusive private high school, it does not matter now. You join <coughs> the uh, Fameco family. Why are you here at this moment as time in history? What are your goals? Admittedly, you are the only ones who are going to be able to answer these questions. The lecturers and support, uh, support staff will guide you to fulfill and reach your goals and your dreams. But you are the driver to your destiny. Don't give your seat to things that can drill or take you off the road to your goals and dreams. As it, as it has been mentioned by other speakers and will be repeat, uh, repeated in mentions, the university the university does not have prefects, but it is guided by timetable uh, timetables and schedule. A timetable is a sequence or schedule of events that one needs to prioritize and attend to in a day. The most important thing in the timetable is what what is your priority at a given time. The faculty will provide the timetables, but it's up to you as a student to prioritize and manage time well. Time is one thing in life that you can never get back. 
once it's gone, it's gone forever. As the Bible admonishes us in Ecclesiastes uh, 3, 1 to 8, there is time for everything and a season for every activity and uh, events. Uh, the faculty is committing to provide you with extra excellent training in media and communication that balances the dynamics of field, yet innovative enough to enable students to, uh, to chart their own course. I urge you to take advantage of our state-of-the-art multimedia labs, film and animation labs, TV studio, and MMU 99.9 radio .9 station to attest the faculty commitment to offering excellent training uh, the platform that the university is using for the virtual orientation was designed, set up, and is manned by our FAMECO members of staff. You'll get a chance to interact with these great men and women in the course of your study. The radio station is also run and managed by the faculty members and students. The audition for the radio presenters and reporters is open to all students in the faculty. I assure you that the radio station has produced great media personalities in this, in this country. We have faculty-specific uh, clubs such as journalism club, corporate communication, and drama club to name a few. Uh, Fameco corporate communication uh, club won the PRSK Bootcamp in 2019. In 2018, Fameco students were runners-up uh, runners in the top story competition. You learn more about co curriculum activities and how to be members of teams and clubs from the Student Affairs Division. Uh, ladies and gen uh, gentlemen, to quote Shakespeare in Julius uh, Caesar, there is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the front, leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is about in shadows and miseries. On uh, Chaza Full Sea, we are now afloat. And we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. You've joined the university at a very exciting and uncertain times. Uncertain because of the retrenchment happening in the media industries, but exciting because of the new opportunities that come up in the field, the new normal and the fourth industrial revolution. The new normal occasioned by COVID-19 has irrevocably changed the media and communication uh, field. Communication information technologies, which are the heart of our programs, are the drivers of the new normal. Travel restrictions, curfews, working from home have created a need for experts to create live street, uh, streaming platforms like the one we are using today, set up studios for content creation, and personalized messages for advertise, advertising goods and services. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I believe you burden this ship at the opportune time, at the right time. You are at the cusp of new era in media and communication training and job mark, uh, market. Uh, you need to recognize and appreciate the fourth industrial revolution, uh, which has put our com media and communication at the apex of all the human affairs. Uh, to, uh, this, uh, our technologies are blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. And these are created opportunities for us to play a pivotal role in terms of changing the way uh, communication is done, advertising, and uh, how goods and services are delivered. Uh, for example, our use of drones uh, in filmmaking and photography rendering of animations using crown computing, virtual, and real, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality will play a central role in advertising and creating communication messages. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have made the right choice to join FAMECO, but to reap maximum benefits for both the infrastructure and st as, as staff, you need to manage your time well and focus on your goals. Thank you. And once again, welcome to Multimedia University of Kenya. Welcome to FAMECO. Thank you, Dean Mutwiri. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, our benefactors, sponsors, I think you have been introduced to the Faculty of Media and Communications well. You are now ready to come 
and join us in both online and when the physical classes start. Just a few points to emphasize, discipline, discipline, discipline. Like you've been told by all the HODs and even the exams coordinator, without any discipline, you will not be able to manage. And also the other thing is what the dean has said at the end, that find time to use the, our equipment and our, and, our, and our facilities so that you can better yourself for the future. Now as we conclude, just a few remarks that we've seen uh, the students posting about registration of units. We want to inform students that you cannot register for units unless you have paid your fees. So please, the first thing you have to do is to pay your fees. If you're, you're sponsored by the government, you go to the website. There is, a, there is a portal there for registration. Ensure you register and upload all the documents that are required and then pay your fees and then you'll be able to register for units. For those who are self-sponsored, if you're self-sponsored and you had, you had applied before uh, last week, you have to come to physically to Multimedia University with the documentations that are posted on the website. So those ones for the hospital, for your next of kin, and uh, the others attached with it, and then come here and you'll be registered. But also at the same time, you will have to pay your fees uh, before you, you can register your classes. Paying of fees, we've been having some challenges with our pay bill. However, we are informed that today it is working well, and also the banks are working well. So continue trying to pay the bill. You, you can use the pay bill or even pay the bank, the KCB, and also equity. Student welfare, again, we want to emphasize that we shall be having a session on Thursday for student welfare. It is critical that the students attend this orientation program for Thursday because that is where they'll be informed of all the things they need to require, they require to live harmoniously here at the university. In conclusion, we welcome you again to Multimedia University. And like the dean and everybody else has been telling you, you have made the right choice to come to Multimedia University. Karibu, and we hope to see you soon, both virtually and physically. Asanteni. stands on 115 hectares of land adjacent to Nairobi National Park. Multimedia University of Kenya and great universities have seen its growth transiting from various institutions in the past before it became a university college in 2008. It was before then uh, referred to a KCCT. We are proud as an institution to host the biggest ICT museum in East and Central Africa. Rich history that has changed the way we relate and conduct our daily lives and business today. Yeah, and it's one of the largest in East and Central Africa. The university has a rich history, having been established in 1948, with our motto being riding on technology, inspiring innovation. We strive to be the university of choice in training, research, innovation, and in extension to meet the aspirations of a dynamic society. We have also seen a tremendous growth since we were established 2013 as a full university. From a mere uh, population of 2,200 in 2013, we are talking in 2018 to a population of uh, 6,000 students. This now calls for expansion of three years facilities. That's why we are very happy for really the government of Kenya to have seen it fit to help us uh, build that library because then it will be able for us uh, to cater for this expanding uh, population. It's not only in undergraduate, we have also seen growth in postgraduate students for the last two years. As I talk to you now, in less than two years, we have that the two postgraduate students who are spread in various deep disciplines in five faculties out of our six, the faculties that the, the university has currently.
within the Academic Affairs Division, we have many programs uh, that are hosted in six different uh, faculties. The first one being the Faculty of Science uh, and Technology. The second one is Faculty of Engineering and Technology. The third one is Faculty of Business and Economics. Uh, the fourth one is uh, Faculty of Media and Communication, which is the largest. We'll be bringing you the prime time news on Mondays. Then we have the Faculty of Computing and Information Technology. The last one, which is the youngest, is the Faculty of Social Sciences and Technology. So all our programs are domiciled in these six uh, faculties and uh, within, at a lower level, within uh, 13 different departments. Our academic programs are designed in consultation with the industry so as to ensure relevant and quality education is offered to all students. Our purpose is mainly to support the core business of the university, which is uh, academic programs. And therefore, we are in charge of providing appropriate infrastructure and uh, human capacity so that uh, we can be able to support them adequately to achieve uh, the mandate of this university. And uh, this year, from last year, we have made some strides. Uh, for instance, we have come up with uh, a new teaching block which can accommodate more students. Remember, the population is increasing. Therefore, we have uh, now larger classrooms that can take up many, much, many more students than before. And uh, the other thing that we have uh, achieved this time is that we have a new library, modern library coming up, and that is one of our greatest achievements, that now we can have our students uh, use a facility that is modern and gives them all the, 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 the facilities that they need. Come with the issue of human capital, we have uh, made some strides. We are aiming at increasing the number of teaching staff because of the increasing number of uh, students. And therefore, we are continuously improving on uh, in adding to the number of uh, doctorates and uh, professors uh, who can support our students. So our focus this year, and uh, even from last year, is to increase the number of PhD staff that we employ. We are training ours, uh, but we also recruit externally uh, to add on to what we are training. We are ISO uh, 9001, 2008 certified. Good morning. Welcome to the Multimedia University of Kenya orientation, online virtual registration, orientation, and induction of new students. We welcome you once again to this prestigious institution of higher learning. Today we are having the orientation for the Faculty of Engineering and Technology. With me are the HODs of the faculty who will be talking to you and inducting you on what is required for, for, for the faculty. Just a brief history about Multimedia University of Kenya. Multimedia University of Kenya is one of the oldest institutions in training institutions in Kenya, having been formed in the late 1940s as part of the Post and Telecommunications Network for Eastern Africa. Along the process, it has grown and evolved up to the time it became the Kenya Communications uh, and Technology, KCCT, and there it was transformed to become the Multimedia University of Kenya as a constituent university, university college of JQUAT. On 1st March 2013, it was started as a fully-fledged university, and that is where we are today. We have a rich history in training, both in all the fields that we undertake, and you are welcome to join Multimedia University. I will not belabor the whole process. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Victoria Okum, who is, in, who is the HOD of Civil Engineering, to begin the process and inform you about her faculty. Thereafter, she shall be inviting the dean of the faculty to who will continue to give us more details. 
Daktari karibu. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mondikwa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a pleasure to have you join us in Multimedia University of Kenya, and more especially in the Faculty of Engineering. So as you have been told, my name is Dr. Victoria Kumu. I'm a structural engineer by profession, and I head the Department of Civil Engineering. So I'm going to give you a brief um, insight into what civil engineering is about. Probably when you are selecting the courses, you wanted to do engineering, but maybe you didn't know which engineering does what. And so I'm going to start by telling you what civil engineering is about, what civil engineers do, so that you feel at home. So civil engineering basically is um, a professional engineering discipline that um, deals with design. In design, I mean you do the calculations of how much weight a structure is going to, ca to carry and how you're going to transfer that weight to the ground because finally it is the ground that carries all our structures. So we design as civil engineers, we do the construction that is actual building, and then we maintain those structures that we have constructed. Now these structures can be found in the physical environment, and that is uh, things like roads, bridges, dams, airports, sewage systems, pipelines, and buildings. So that is basically what civil engineers do. So they conceive the design when a client comes, a client can be a person who wants to build something, it can be an institution, a government entity, or anybody who wants to bring up something, like a building. So we conceive the design based on what the client wants, and then we design, build, supervise, operate, and maintain the infrastructure. So because of the risks involved in these structures, you can imagine if you are a doctor, if you chose to be a doctor, then if you become, um, if you're in a situation where you do something and a patient passes on, or by bad luck or good luck, it was her day or his day and the death passes on, then it can only be one patient at a time. But for engineers, if a building collapses, for example, then everybody that was in that building can be at risk of either dying, there can be loss of property and things like that. So for engineers, there is a higher risk involved. And for that reason, there is need for keenness, if you're an engineer, to finer details and professional ethics. Why am I bringing this up now? It's because this keenness and professional ethics starts right from when you're a student. We expect that when you start your classes next week, you will be able to attend all your classes. You will be able to undertake all the assignments that you're given. You'll be able to attend all the practical sessions that you'll have. And finally, you will be able to undertake the examination processes that you will have. Apart from the actual classes, examination, and practicals, we also have what we call internships. That is an opportunity for you to be in the industry to practice what you have learned. So again, to be able to be a good engineer, you are supposed to make sure that you uh, undertake the assignments that you're given during those internship sessions. And so keenness to details and professional ethics is very, very important. Now, civil engineering is broadly divided into three uh, aspects or three parts. The first one is transportation engineering. So in transportation engineering, we deal with roads or highways and then road networks. So that is how the roads inter interlink with each other to transport people from one place to another. The second uh, discipline in civil is structural engineering. And that is where I fall, I'm a structural engineer. And so in structural engineering, we'll deal with bridges, buildings, dams, canals, and things like that. And lastly, the last one is public health engineering. 
So under public health engineering, we deal with water treatment and distribution. That is, we build, maintain, and operate water drinking water treatment plants and distribute that water through piping to homes, to institutions, and things like that. And then we also do wastewater treatment. So the wastewater that is released from our sewer lines and the rest, we treat them as civil engineers. And lastly, we also deal with solid waste management. Now, once you have come or joined us as a civil engineer, as you have come, engineering student, you will be exposed to all these three disciplines of civil engineering. So as you're doing your training in the five years that you will be here, you will be exposed to transportation engineering, structural engineering, and public health engineering. So upon completion, you can decide to join a consultancy firm. Consultants are those people or those engineers that do the actual design and supervision of the works. Or you can decide to join a contractor. A contractor is that entity or that engineering firm that implements the designs. So they're the ones who do the actual construction. Or you can decide to join a research institution. Like in Kenya, we have Kirdi and others that deal with the research in aspects of infrastructure or materials. But you can also decide to join academia. Yes, like I decided. So those are the different areas that you can work in once you're done. And it's very wide. The opportunities are so much. So it's very good that you're here and you made a good choice. So basically, that is what civil engineering is about. So um, I would like to now introduce my dean, who is going to take you through the other aspects of engineering. In multimedia, we have electrical engineering and also mechanical engineering. So he's going to give us a brief of those other engineering fields and the general aspects of engineering uh, disciplines that we have. But before I call him, I can't leave without mentioning that. I know for the ladies that are here or that have joined us, you may get in class and find that you are two out of 50. Yes, don't worry. We have gone ahead of you. And you should take it as a positive thing because with the affirmative action and things like that, you stand a very good chance to get an opportunity once you're done. So don't fear for the ladies. Um, you're up to the task and you are welcome. And we are here for you. If you need anything, you can always approach any of us. So without much ado, I want to introduce my dean, Professor Engineer Abel Mayaka, who is going to take us through the rest of the aspects of the engineering faculty. Welcome, Prof. Okay, uh, thank you very much, the COD, Civil Engineering, uh, Dr. Victoria Okumu. Our dear students, parents, guardians, or other interested viewers, allow me to take this opportunity uh, to welcome you, all of you, to this virtual orientation program. Uh, I wish to start by introducing myself before I can go into the various aspects that I want to uh, give an orientation in. Uh, I'm a professor of manufacturing engineering and uh, currently I'm serving as a dean faculty of engineering and technology of multimedia. I'm a registered uh, professional engineer in mechanical engineering. Uh, and uh, I also serve as a, a panelist who admit uh, professional uh, engineering students into the professional body. Uh, I have over 28 years uh, of teaching and uh, research experience at the university. And uh, I've held various capacities uh, in administration and consultancy services at the university. Uh, this I've done after graduating with my PhD at the age of 28. I hope uh, you have not started calculating how old I am. 
but uh, I know when you will come, we shall have one-to-one -one discussion and you will uh, get the exact uh, age, my age, yeah? Uh, let me go into the, now, the structure, the organizational structure of the faculty. The faculty, uh, as the, the dean, who is myself, as the head, and then I have three departments, that is mechanical and mechatronics engineering, electrical and communication engineering, and civil engineering, which Dr. Okumu heads. Apart from that, we have lecturers who falls under the uh, chairman or chairpersons of the department, <coughs> and uh, technical staff who assist students in the practical aspects. We also have support staff who assist us with administrative uh, duties, and this includes also administrators and secretaries. Apart from that, we have uh, uh, what we call the Multimedia University Engineering Student Association, uh, which is a student organization and it also works with us in the management of the student welfare. Uh, allow me to just briefly uh, introduce you into two other departments whose uh, chairpersons, for some reason, were not able to be here. I will be brief, but then most of the issues will be covered under my uh, remarks as a dean. So I will start with uh, the Department of Mechanical and Mechatronics. Uh, the department has two names. It was expected to have two programs, Mechanical and Mechatronics, with one housed in one department. But currently in that department we have three programs. That is Diploma in Mechanical Engineering. Uh, then we have Pajeras of Science in Mechanical and Manufacturing. And then we have a Master's in Mechanical Engineering. Uh, I will uh, uh, concentrate on uh, the undergraduate program, which is the PSC Mechanical and Manufacturing. Uh, this area of engineering covers five meta areas of specialization further. Uh, this includes ma material engineering, manufacturing and design, applied mechanics, thermofluids and energy, and finally industrial engineering. Material engineering uh, basically deals with the materials which we use for production and even in construction industry. Uh, those includes metals, polymers, and so forth. Then uh, manufacturing and design deals with uh, transforming the raw material into products, and actually that is my area I profess. I'm a, a professor in manufacturing, and of course the design process. Yeah. Then applied mechanics is uh, closely related to civil engineering. It deals with the strengths of material. When we are designing and fabricating, we have to ensure that uh, the materials are well designed to withstand certain forces. That covers that. Thermofluids deals again uh, with engineering. You'll find that it cuts are close in most areas. Uh, it deals with the flow of fluids. Uh, Energy, that is thermo, and that is why it is also related with energy. So energy, you can see, uh, it would be cutting across mechanical and electrical. And then industrial engineering basically deals with uh, organization and management of industrial processes and uh, designs. Uh, I want to mention that uh, uh, it is very important to note that our mechanical program is called mechanical and manufacturing and manufacturing is one of the four big agenda of the president. So you, you can see it was well thought as we were doing the needs uh, analysis as we started this program. This program is also accredited by the professional body that is the Engineers Board of Kenya. Then I would also now briefly talk about electrical engineering. Uh, electrical engineering and the communication department has also 
four, four programs. That is a diploma in electrical and telecommunication engineering, bachelor of science in electrical, that is for undergraduate, and then it has got masters in, me, uh, in communication and media. Uh, I, I will give other details which cuts across so that I will avoid repeating myself so I might not talk about the details in these programs at this point. Uh, the major areas in the program which is being offered electrical and telecommunication includes things to do with communication. Uh, this touches on uh, 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 areas of uh, uh, Safaricom, uh, Airtel, those are the industries which deals with the communication, yeah? satellite communication and so forth. Then it also covers the area of power, we call it sometimes heavy, heavy current and so forth. This involves or covers uh, power from the point of generation, uh, distribution and utilization. Yeah? And then we have the, another area under that which we call electronics and we can put it together with computers. It deals with the small uh, electrical instruments and it also covers light currents. So uh, th this, this involves things like laptops, phones, and so forth. Those are uh, uh, gadgets which uses uh, small electronic components which uh, consumes uh, low power of electricity. Uh, th this program equally like mechanical is uh, uh, accredited by the professional body and uh, it has got the state-of-the-art equipment. I wish to say that most institutions, other universities, uh, from the history which you are given, this institution had that history of communication. So we are well endowed with the equipment to an extent that some universities even come to, uh, to, to take their students through their, their practicals in our university. Uh, allow me now to, to go into the bigger picture about the, the faculty and uh, maybe I could uh, just mention that the program of civil engineering, of course, students will be wanting to know whether it's accredited or all not. Uh, as I mentioned, I work with the, the professional body and I know what is required. We have got at all the required, uh, uh, requ we have we have acquired all the necessary requirements for this program to be accredited. That in, includes staffing and equipment. So we were disrupted a bit by this uh, issue of COVID. Otherwise, we are on the process to get that program accredited. And I'm very sure we shall uh, do that very soon. Uh, allow me now then to move to the generalities about the faculty. The faculty is uh, growing. Uh, multimedia University, as some of you might be knowing, uh, is uh, one of the 14 technical universities in the country. And uh, therefore, uh, engineering, being a technical area, is part of uh, the programs offered at the university. We are offering programs at undergraduate level, master's level, and very soon we expect to offer programs at PhD level. We were the pioneers to graduate students at master's level, and I hope with the support from the faculty we shall be able to open up so that as you come in, you are able to go to master's and go to PhD and become also professors like some of us, so that there is that transition. Currently, the population of students at our faculty is around 521, of which 492 are undergraduate and six are master students. Then the rest are a diploma. Uh, the number is a, a little bit lower because uh, the civil engineering, we are now in third year. Mechanical, we are in fourth year. It is only electrical which has got uh, students in all the five years. 
However, because of uh, uh, the requirements of staffing and facilities, we are aiming to stabilize at an average of 40 students per program per year, which will translate to around 600 students in that faculty. Uh, staffing and equipment, as I mentioned, uh, the, the faculty is well staffed. I think this is the only faculty with the highest number of professors. We, we are uh, around five professors in that faculty. And uh, uh, you new students who are coming, you will have an advantage to interact with the well experienced uh, uh, people or staff faculty. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, state-of-the-art equipment, which uh, were partly we, we got from the African Development Bank through the Ministry of Education, and those equipment are going to enhance or enhances the theoretical knowledge that we give to you students. And this enables us to produce highly qualified engineering manpower. Uh, the design of their academic program, if I can talk on that, uh, our academic programs, all the engineering programs run for five years. They are five years program. And they combine a broad-based education in engineering science with a strong grounding in quantitative problem solving design and communication skills. So we, we, we emphasize on that because the students, you as students, you should be able to communicate apart from doing the, the engineering, uh, you should be able to communicate what you are doing to the rest of the world, yeah? So th those are the emphasis in that. But then uh, when you look at the spread of what is covered in the undergraduate program, we start with the basic sciences, which forms the basis for the engineering, uh, and uh, this is done in year one. Then in year two, three, we do fundamentals of engineering, which uh, fairly cuts across all, all the faculty uh, programs, yeah? So most of the courses, units, which will be taught in year two and three, the theory will be taught to mechanical, to electrical, and to civil, except a few. And then from third year, part of third year, fourth year, and the final year, the students are doing now areas of specialization. I mean, that, that program, units in that program that you join. Um, we put a lot of emphasis in the practical aspects. So we have experiential uh, courses, and that starts with the workshop practice after the at the end of the second year and that is done internally so we familiarize all the engineering students in all the departments all the facilities we have within the uh, the, the faculty then we have two attachments which are done in third and fourth year respectively which are carried out externally and all these are requirements for the students to graduate uh, I, I'm aware that the professional bodies want to take that as part of the experience for purposes of registration, so we should be working with them to see how that works. At the end of the, uh, at the final year of, that is the fifth year, the students normally take projects. And these projects are supervised uh, by our uh, faculty and that is why also partly we have to control the numbers. If we have to look at the quality, we have to look at the staffing and the equipment. So we, the students to do a project which they can uh, fabricate and or simulate if it is not fabricated, yeah? Uh, if we come to admission criteria, I know there is a small window still for those of you who might be watching us and have uh, not registered in the programs and would like to know what are the requirements. There is a small window around two weeks from now. You should be still be able to come. 
and those ones who went to other programs and would want to change it is good to know what are these requirements for you to join these engineering programs. We require for KCSC a mean grade of C plus and C plus in maths, physics and chemistry. Uh, students who might be having a, a diploma will join year one or year two depending on uh, how they performed in the diploma. That is, if you have a pass, you go year one. Credit, you go to year two. Uh, students who wish to transfer, I think uh, that, that has been shared university-wide. Uh, you can do that, but know, know that you need to meet the minimum uh, uh, cutoff point, which you are able to do it online yourself. But again, what is important is to note that uh, you never graduate from our faculty if you have not spent more than 50% of the time allocated for that program. So in other words, you can only come and start from third year. You can't come and start from fourth year and graduate from here. So that is very important. Let me now turn to... Uh, how we do, we do assessment of the various courses that we offer. Our courses are continuously monitored. From the time you enter year one <coughs> up to the time you graduate. And therefore, you are required to start working immediately. And uh, our degree classification is weighted. What do I mean weighted? It, it takes 10% uh, of first year, then uh, it takes 20% uh, uh, of second year uh, marks, 20% in third year, and then 25 in fourth and fifth. So the degree classification will be based on how you are performing from year one. I know when students uh, join the university, they want to say, I want to be a first class honors. And when they miss it, they say even a second class honors is good. And eventually they will just say even a pass is okay. <laughs> you see? So I think we, we want you to concentrate and make sure that you score highly from the word go. Uh, exams are set internally and moderated externally. We have to check for quality that we are very strict on that. Uh, and we advise that students work hard so that you don't repeat. However, there are uh, opportunities for one, if for one reason or the other you have not been able to pass the exam, three to f five units you can do a supplementary which we organize at the end of the academic year. And uh, if you, you have six to seven, then you are uh, supposed to repeat. And if you get more than seven, then we discontinue you from the program. And uh, repeating, you can only repeat once uh, in a given course. If you, uh, you fail, then you are again uh, discontinued. Uh, it, it is not advisable to do supplementary exams because you never, I ever had you study, you never score more than 40%. That is what goes to your record. So it is good to get the right marks from the beginning, yeah? Uh, we offer special, we allow special exams for medical reasons and uh, the other reasons uh, which the faculty will assess and recommend. And this must be supported with the documents and should be done prior to the examinations, not uh, later on. Uh, you. And it is important also to note that no student will be allowed for our program to spend more than two, eight years in a study. If you go beyond, you will be discontinued in this process of repeating and other things. You will never go beyond eight. More details on uh, uh, the academic examination regressions you can you, you can get them from our faculty uh, when you join uh, we, we shall give you a copy so that you can read the, the details um, allow me now to just briefly again talk about career opportunities I know we have mentioned uh, partly uh, 
most engineering programs cut across, like uh, mechanical and electrical engineer will work almost in all the engineering facilities. Yes, they can work at the, at the port, their electrical things, their motors, conveyors, and so forth, those are mechanical. They can work in uh, uh, food processing industries. Uh, they can work in uh, uh, service industries like uh, Safaricom and uh, other companies. Uh, our engineers can work in uh, areas of uh, power generation, that is Kenya Power, Kenigen and uh, Kenya Power, power distribution. Those are uh, possibilities. And uh, the, 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 the areas are uh, very broad in vehicle, manufacturing industries, construction, aviation, marine, it is broad. You, you should be able to get an opportunity in any of these areas. But as you specialize, then uh, again, you have to narrow. Uh, let me talk about uh, linkages and cooperations within the faculty. Uh, the, the faculty has uh, strong linkages and cooperation with the industry and other institutions, both locally and uh, internationally. Uh, through some of these linkages, we have been able to conduct joint research and consultants work. For the students, uh, these linkages have opened opportunities uh, for students to get attachments in the industry and also further their education. Uh, we have uh, uh, what I could call a long-lasting relationship we have been having with the People's Friendship University of Russia. And we have had over 20 students getting scholarships. And some of those students who went and did their courses have come back, and some of them are working with us. Uh, I would also want to mention that recently uh, uh, I, I got an appointment as a member of the National University Industry Corporation Committee for a period of three years uh, with the ongoing uh, uh, reforms in the university education sector, which was uh, given by the PS uh, State Department of University Education and Research. Uh, the, the, the purpose of uh, this particular committee is to streamline management and exploitation of partnerships between universities and industry and I do hope, as a dean of the faculty, uh, this faculty and the university will uh, uh, greatly benefit from uh, my participation. Uh, let me now go to uh, the final point, which uh, touches on student life. This is a student discipline and conduct. Um, well, it's uh, starting or staying with us uh, at this university, assuming uh, you have not repeated anywhere, uh, then students are expected to be well disciplined and have good conduct. Otherwise, if uh, you miss one of these, you are, you are, you are, your education or your studies are going to be affected in one way or another. Uh, it is assumed as students joining the university, all of them are above 18. I know there could be one or two who are below 18, but the majority are above 18. And any action, anything you do, any responsibility you, uh, you carry out, you are responsible for, for those actions that you, you do, yeah? So at, at the university, you are likely to meet with all characters of persons, all kinds of situations, good and bad ones, and it is up to you to make sure that you pick what is good and what can build your career and uh, uh, support your, uh, your, your running process. There, there are a few things I, I just need to uh, pick out from the conduct of students which we have experienced affects students
to an extent that some of them, uh, some of you and or some of uh, the students we have had before, I'm not talking about you because I know you are going to be good students, uh, they have ended up being expelled from the university. Things like abuse of drugs and uh, uh, usage of uh, uh, alcohol, yeah? But the drugs is straight away expulsion. If you are caught holding any drug and uh, or uh, using it, uh, that is expulsion. Uh, there are uh, other issues related with uh, uh, irresponsible sex, for example. Uh, this can lead to transmission of diseases and for ladies unexpected pregnancies which can again interrupt your running process. So this, these are uh, things that you need to, to look at. Yeah? Then when it comes to academic, we, uh, there is some malpractices in what we call examination cheating. Either you are copying from another student, you are using materials which are not authorized, uh, that will make you to be either ex uh, expelled or, or be suspended for some years. And these are the things we are saying you should avoid. And remember, eight years, you, you, f you are found in such a mistakes, then we, we exceed you. So that you should not uh, find yourself in that. Stealing, taking things from your uh, other students in the hostels and elsewhere, in classrooms, laptops, that is uh, uh, the things which we normally experience uh, that can uh, also disrupt your academic programs. Then we have uh, this thing of comrades, demonstrations. Demonstrations are good when you are uh, doing it in an organized way to air your grievances. But uh, demonstrations which end up to destruction of property and other things, you would end up paying it. You like it or not, uh, you, you have to pay it. And sometimes parents are not, you know, they, 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 they are struggling to make sure uh, that you, you, you study, but not to pay your fees, but not to pay for what you are breaking. So I think it is good that you know to what extent you can demonstrate not uh, paying and not being expelled from the university. The detailed uh, information on uh, student contact and penalties related to that can be found in uh, uh, Student Rules and uh, Conduct Handbook. Uh, that would be shared to you again. So allow me uh, finally to take this opportunity to welcome you once again to our faculty and wish you well in your studies. Uh, may God bless you all and thanks for listening to me. Thank you Professor Mayaka and Dr. Kumu for the good presentation about civil aviation, about, oops, about uh, engineering and civil engineering. I think we have gotten all the information we need and the introduction to the faculty. I think now students, parents, guardians, you have a better understanding of where we stand. I would like again just to do a small summary of what uh, our two distinguished uh, doctor and professor have said. Number one is discipline. And again, I'll emphasize again, discipline is key, especially in this faculty which is very demanding and very rigorous, where you have theories which you have to look at and practicals that you must do and meet uh, tight deadlines. So you must be a disciplined student to ensure that you, you manage in this faculty. Number, number two is classwork, attendance of classes and doing your projects. I think you've been told very clearly that you need to do this uh, very well so that you are able to succeed. Like in the previous uh, orientation we talked about, uh, there's a part of the coursework which is done in terms of assignments. If you do this well, you'll be able to easily pass. The other thing which the uh, professor has said also is that, and has been emphasized in the, in the orientation, is that when students come to the university, they are looking at getting a first class. But however, as they start moving on, they are discouraged, mainly due to peer pressure, 
to the point where they, they say, as long as I pass, I will be okay. I hear some of them saying karatasi ni karatasi, aina tafauti. But I guarantee you, when you go to the market, karatasi siyo karatasi. You must get a good degree so that you are able to move to the next level. Now, apart from that, I would just like to emphasize uh, a few points. One is uh, unit registration. Please, students, note that you cannot register for, for units unless you have paid fees. So you must pay your fees, especially for those in uh, SSP. You must ensure that you, are you, have, you have come to multimedia university so that you are able to be registered by the admissions department. And then thereafter, you'll be able to pay your fees. And then you'll be able to access the student portal and register for units. For those who are government sponsored, please note that you must go to the website, go into the registration portal, register, upload all the documents that are required, and thereafter pay your fees. And once you pay your fees, you'll be able to register for your uh, units. Fees can be paid to the bank, Equity Bank, and also KCB. The details are on the website. And we also have a pay bill which you can use to pay your fees. We know we've been having challenges with both the banks and the pay bill. Uh, as of uh, last week and also this morning and yesterday, we have seen that it has stabilized and most people are making, are making payment of fees uh, very comfortably. Please feel free to do that. If you have a challenge, please contact us on social media or make a phone call to us. The other one is student welfare. On Thursday, we shall be having an orientation for student welfare. We would like to encourage students to please attend this uh, student welfare orientation. It touches a lot of things that you will require here at the university for you to survive. So please ensure you attend that one. Again, it shall be online and orientation, or just as this one. The link will be on the web website and our social media platforms. Interfaculty transfer. Students are encouraged to look at their faculties, and those who wish to transfer are allowed to do so. However, for those who are SSP, you must have met the minimum requirements for the faculty you intend to attend and even the course. For those who are government sponsored, you must have qualified under the COOP system. So the easiest way to find out if you qualify to transfer is to go to the COOP's uh, portal and try and find out if your cutoff marks meet what is required by the faculty or the program. If you, are, if you satisfy all this, the web, on the website, we have placed the, the transfer form, which you must download, fill, and then email it to admissions at mmu.ac.ke. Or if you'll be on campus, you are allowed to come and drop it at the admissions office so that they can start processing your, your transfer. Again, we'd like to emphasize on the issue of discipline, issues of drugs. We want to tell all students that Multimedia University of Kenya is a drug-free environment, and anybody found using or carrying or peddling drugs are expelled. And again, would like to emphasize this, that if you use drugs, you're carrying drugs, or you're peddling drugs, once you're found, you will be expelled. And before you're expelled, we shall hand you over to the police, because this is a crime not only at the university, but also nationally. So please be on the lookout for this. Again, you've been told even by the prof that you need to look at yourself in terms of social uh, interaction, especially things to do with the sexual uh, interactions, for not because of just for our, self, for our sake, but also for yourselves. But also just for your, for your comfort, we have counselors on, on campus who are willing and are able to assist you in case you have any challenges socially, even financially, in any other way. So students, parents, again, would like to emphasize that you have chosen the right institution for your higher education. We welcome you to Multimedia University of Kenya. We look forward to meeting you online, that is virtually, and also very soon physically, so that we can, able to, we can be able to interact with you and we can be able to share and have a discourse on academic uh, work that you're doing. Thank you very much, and we look forward
to see you once you come in. The next orientation will be tomorrow at 9 o'clock and it shall be for the Faculty of Science and thereafter we shall have another orientation at, te at 10 for the Faculty of Social Science, I believe. So ladies and gentlemen, feel free to contact us in case of anything or any challenges you might be having. We will try to assist you. Thank you and have a good day.